And I, I think one of the things that we forget even, you know, just in everyday life too, is that like our mind and our body work together. Um, and so there's so many things like even, you know, as is feeling stressed and like always in that, like, you know, how, what am I going to do or how am I going to do this? And our bodies respond to stress in ways as well. Um, you know, that sometimes we don't even think about it because we're like, well, that has, you know, my, you know, my back pain has nothing to do with, uh, you know, with the stress. However, sometimes when you remove certain things from your life, then you start to feel better. You start to feel different. So, um, you know, so many things to pay attention to with our body. (laughs) Welcome to Single Parent Success Stories, a podcast designed to inspire single parents. Here you'll find resources from self-care to finances to parenting and everything in between. Discover what it takes to thrive. Let the stories inspire you to what is possible. Hello and welcome to Single Parent Success Stories. Today I have a special guest with me, Christy Paranofsky, joining me from New Jersey. She's a former single mom of uh, of one uh, daughter. For all her life, she struggled with food, food challenges. And there was a point in her life, and because in her family growing up, food was used as a to comfort. And so the problem continued until... She had an aha moment until she was standing on the deck visiting her brother for his 30th birthday. And she clearly remembered how she started thinking that she didn't want to eat like that any longer. And something had to change. She was so unhappy with herself. She was unhappy the way she felt. She was unhappy with the example she was setting for her daughter. Welcome, Christy. It is a pleasure to have you. So thank you so much. Thank Glad you. to be here. Yeah. So please share with us how did you become a single parent? Was this an accident or a conscious decision? So no, it was a very it was a conscious decision um, after a period of time that um, had happened. I was married very young, and I also had my daughter at a young age. I was twenty four when I had my first daughter. And um, it was a very conscious decision for me after realizing that my relationship was not what I had expected it to be. It was, it turned out to be very toxic. Um, And um, I didn't want my daughter growing up, seeing her mother unhappy, also seeing her mom and her dad fighting all the time. Um, So it was a conscious decision to leave the relationship and take her with me. Yes. All right. Good. Good. What some of what were some of the struggles you faced when you were a single parent? I didn't have a job. <laughs> um, I was a stay-at-home mom. My daughter was at the time when I left, and I didn't have a job. I um, actually was living hours away from friends. So I just, I in my car, I think I had dollars in my bank account and I drove two hours to Philadelphia to live with a friend of mine um, upstairs in her attic, because that's where she had my daughter and I were up there struggle finding a job um, that could like also to daughter because th- then I had to pay for child care, right? So it's like all a thing. Um, and then having enough income to move out on my own to get started again, um, you know, and just like all of that, I remember was really, that was the, and then once I was able to get my own apartment with her, there were months that decide between food or rent, <laughs> And, you know, um, making those choices. So I think looking, those were really some of the hardest choices and just hardest struggles that were at the very beginning, kind of gained my footing, if you will. Yeah, yeah. And what what helped you? How did you overcome your challenges? 
What did you do? So one of the things that helped me is having a really good support system. Um, even though they didn't live close at the time, I'm originally from Canada and family was in Canada and, but they support as I can, as well as the friends that I had made in Philadelphia and just really having them wrap, having them help with my daughter when I needed them to, um, even financially, you know, my parents were able to help a little bit too, but, um, really that support system for me was really important. Yes, totally. Support system is everything. How they say you need a village to raise a child. What kind of advice would you give to your younger self? Um, that's a great question. <laughs> Really good question. You know what I would tell my younger self to trust herself, trust herself in making decisions. And when things didn't feel right, or, you know, something was out of whack, um, to be able to be okay with that and know that, um, you know, she didn't have to do something just because she thought that's what you had to do, but to trust her gut instinct and really, really trust herself. Totally. Do you think she would have listened? I don't know. I, because even now I'm pretty stubborn. Um, so I don't know. She probably, no, I'm still going to do this <laughs> and done it. What do you think is the most important trait to instill in a child? Confidence. Totally. Yes. How do you how do you show that? Can you give me an example? How do you instill confidence in your daughter? Showing them, you know, I have two daughters now. I, my big one is 25 and my little one is 10. Um, so two two completely different children in different, you know, generations and time. Showing them that it's okay to try and okay also to fail. You don't have to be perfect every single time. And if you fail, a lesson of, you know, done different, or how can I, you know, how can I learn this experience for next time? And just, you know, to, to let them see, you do the things that are hard, and that you're not perfect at, because I think that's able to see that they can do that too, then. Totally, totally. I love that. What kind of advice would you share with single parents who are just stepping onto the journey of single parenting? Going to be small steps every day. Um, I think that something that was really important to be able to learn too was that nothing that I did had to be this grand. I just sometimes had to focus on today. Um, but one of the big things is to find somebody who can be in your corner. If you have a family, if you don't have somebody right now, just um, to branch out. Well, that's one of the scariest things, I think, is to you know, go outside of your comfort zone and to somebody um, who can be in your corner and that person can you know, walk, walk through those really hard days with you. So to find... find that can understand you and can can be with you. Totally, totally. Was there a high quote, a book or a person who inspired you to change, who inspired you to move through struggles that you faced as a single parent? Well, if there was like a specific book or person, I just, I remember just like seeing other people be able to do it and to know, like, I didn't want to always just like, kind of be here in this fight or flight mode. Um, and I wanted to expand and, and to do things for myself. So I think for me, it was more of um, just seeing what other people were doing and allowing myself to think that I can one day do, you know, do something else, do, you know, do things that are outside of my realm of possibility right now, but someday that will happen. Totally, totally. How did, uh, you know, when you were a single parent, how did you discover what you do now? You know, I know you came a point to realize that you could no longer, you know, continue using food as your comfort mechanism 
So mm -hmm. how how did that uh, change for you and what kind of benefit did you see? Yeah, so um, that was my, that's always been my coping mechanism is food. And one of the things that I noticed when my relationship, my marriage was not doing well at all, I then uh, flipped that, right? So I found comfort in food and that's how I fed myself. It's like, well, I'm getting love this way, right? It feels good. So I'm going to eat. Um, and the downside of that was weight gain, um, not feeling good about myself, not being able to play with my, with my daughter. Um, and my mom at the same time was going through breast cancer. She had been diagnosed with breast cancer. So there was kind of a health scare in our family. And I looked at what I was eating as well as I looked at my mom's, um, you know, diagnosis as well. And was like, what happens if I'm too sick to take care of my daughter? And how do I change this? What, you know, what can I do? So I then began to, and I still love to eat to this day. So I never, I didn't ever like, restrict myself or start dieting or, you know, anything like that. But what I started to explore was how different foods affected my body in different ways. And, you know, what, what did that mean? So I started reading books. I started, um, experimenting with eating different vegetables and things like that on my own. And then once I really got into that, I, at that time then, was also deep in a career of uh, working in childcare. I was a childcare director for 15 years um, because as a single mom, I could take my child with me to work. So that worked hand in hand. But then I was working with all these moms who would come into my office and ask me how you know, after such a busy day of working, how they could make some quick, healthy meals for their family, you know, ideas. And that kind of sparked in me then an interest of, well, how can I help these moms? How can I help these families in a different way than I'm doing right now at the child care center? So I started looking into my health coaching certification um, and I enrolled secretly um, because I didn't want anybody to laugh at me or think that I was like this crazy person. Um, so I enrolled secretly and in a year I had received my, my health coaching certification, but during that time, that's when I started practicing the methods that I was learning in the program, not only with myself and my family, but also with the other, um, families that I was working with at the time. Um, and so it kind of, you know, it started with my mom's diagnosis and then kind of trickled down to what I was doing with myself when I lost my weight and then bringing that into the families that I worked with. Um, and it's because food is truly at the center of everything I do. <laughs> Um, it seemed like a really perfect fit for me and it made sense and I could still eat food and learn about food, but in a way that wasn't harmful to my body. Totally. I love that. <laughs> so you, in the beginning, you said that you, you read some books or so are there any good books that you read on food and nutrition that you can you know, recommend? There's, there's so many. Um, and that is one of the things that I find a lot of women struggle with too, is that there's so much information out there about nutrition, depending on what you're looking for um, and what it is. So specifically for myself, because I don't even myself and with the women that I work with, I don't restrict, I don't take away things. Um, what I uh, started with like really at the beginning was um uh, the, uh, medical medium, he has written, um, I'm just looking at my bookshelf now. I think there's five books specifically on plants and fruits and vegetables, um, herbs and how they affect your body. And if you have uh, you know, if there's something certain in your body that you don't like, or that you're feeling, um, that food really is your medicine. 
And so that was one of the things that I, and I still like, I keep those as reference books because I still use those a lot. Um, but if you are, you know, for anybody that is looking to heal their body from the inside out, I'm a strong believer that food is one of the ways to do that. And the medical medium um, really has some great to be able to help somebody with that process along the way. Totally. Yeah. I, I do believe that food is our medicine. Mm -hmm. I think we have forgotten that with all the pills and all the supplements. Yes. It's it's true. It's true. Because our body is such an intelligent uh, mechanism and has so many processes that are going behind the scenes that we don't take we take for granted because yeah. it's just working. Like I took for granted the fact of walking until I dislocated my knee. And I'm totally fine and clear now. But now <laughs> there are so many things that are happening behind the scenes that we don't even pay attention to because they are there. We only start to appreciate when they're missing a gun. When we don't have them. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I, I think one of the things that we forget even, you know, just in everyday life too, is that like our mind and our body work together. Um, and so there's so many things like even, you know, as a feeling stressed and like always in that, like, you know, how, what am I going to do or how am I going to do this? And our bodies respond to stress in ways as well. Um, you know, that sometimes we don't even think about it because we're like, well, that has, you know, my, you know, my back pain has nothing to do with, uh, you know, with the stress. However, sometimes when you remove certain things from your life, then you start to feel better. You start to feel different. So, um, you know, so many things to pay attention to with our body. <laughs> totally, totally. What was the first thing you noticed after you started, you know, choosing a healthier route for yourself? Yeah. Um, I had more energy. I had more energy. And, um, because I still, when I was 30, when I had that like aha moment, um, I was 30, my daughter was five and I was working all day. She would go to before care. I would pick her up after care. Um, and like, Time, I was exhausted. I couldn't think of anything else, right? Except it was just like, I can't wait till bedtime so I can put her to bed. And then I just open, I don't have to do anything. Um, but what I found, I slowly started to have more energy, which meant then I was able to be more present with her after school. I was able to teach her how to ride her bike. I was able to do things with her that I didn't have time for before. And so for me, as a mom who had full custody of her, that was really important as well, because I wanted to be able to be present and to be able to do these things with her. Um, so that was one of the very first things for me was that I noticed I had more energy and I was able to do more things than I was doing. Totally, totally. And it makes such a difference. What is in your life right now that you cannot live without? <laughs> Um, one of the things that I absolutely, so there's, there's two things actually. Um, so the first thing is every morning, even on the weekend, some people only do things like Monday through Friday, and then they leave the weekends to themselves. But this is like every morning, um, I start my day with a glass, a mug, actually like a coffee mug of hot water with lemon before my um, what I find is it kind of settles myself for the day. It allows my body to like, uh, like get moving, right? It's like a kind of a gentle push of like, okay, here we go, here we go. Um, and it's easy on my digestive system to start. So I start that. And then something recently that I have started in my life is um, uh, CrossFit and strength training. And that is something, it is a non-negotiable in my day. My family knows that. And that is something that has been um, something I look forward to it. I have a really great community of people there that, um, you know, support me. And it's, it's a place for me. It's an outlet um, for me to be able to move my body, get anxiety out, you know, um, any, any emotions you can, you can get it out, um, 
<laughs> with weights, right? So those are two things that definitely um, are non-negotiables in my life right now. <laughs> nice, nice. I know how it can be. Uh, yeah. Mornings are the best time, you know, to set up for the day. And those two practices are what keeping you going throughout. It's yeah. awesome. awesome. <laughs> it's true. What are your hobbies? What do you like to do for fun? I like to travel. Um, and a, I like to travel anywhere warm. So beaches are like an ideal, um, ideal situation for me. But I recently have just like nature, being out in nature and hiking, um, spending time with, with my daughters, both of them, um, you know, just being able to be outside. Those are things that are very calming for me. They make me feel good. Um, so I would, I would say, I would say that. That's beautiful. Beautiful. What would you say is your superpower? Is um, anything with vegetables. So I, I love to think outside the box. I love to be able to experiment with vegetables and try different methods. And I've been able to really, um, because of that, because I've tried so many different things and vegetables and spices, I'm able to help the women that I work with as well, um, bring new flavors into their families because they're, you know, it can be nerve wracking trying new foods and trying new things and not not being confident in yourself. Um, and because I've had that experience now, I'm able to do that. And so I, I tell people all the time, give me a, give me a vegetable and I will give you at least three different ways that you can, uh, we'll cook that vegetable and you will never not know what to do. <laughs> awesome. Do you have a favorite recipe that you can share? One of my favorite recipes um, is actually for a mango curry. And I, so I grew up in uh, Kenya, East Africa for nine years. And so I had the, like, uh, I guess, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like I had the opportunity to try different fruits and vegetables that, you know, nobody would, but it's a very simple mango curry using coconut milk. And you actually use the skin of the mango as well, um, which is, it makes it more fibrous, which is better for us. And then you use um, a jar of the red Thai curry and that together along with some of the fresh mango puree that you, that you cut off. Um, it's a sweeter mango, like it's a sweeter curry, but if you have it, like a jasmine rice, it's almost kind of like a dessert. Um, and that's, so when I'm looking for comfort food and I need like that feeling, that hug, that is like one of my go-to recipes where I'm like, oh, I'll make some mango curry tonight and that will make me feel good, um, right? And it's just one of those delicious recipes. So that's one of my favorites. <laughs> nice, nice, I love that. Is there anything I haven't asked that you would like to share? Um, no, I don't think so. I think, you know, just one of the things, whether single mom, whether married, whether, you know, whatever it is, um, just give yourself grace and remember that you can do hard things. It might take a little bit longer than you thought it was going to. <laughs> you can do it. And when you have it and you have somebody walking beside you, that will take you farther and faster. So um, always, always look outside for those people that can, that can encourage you, but um, give yourself grace because it's hard. It's, it's a hard road, no matter where you are. Totally, totally. If people would like to learn more about you, connect with you, where would they go? Um, so Instagram is really the place where, I, I hang out um, and my company is Clean Eating with Christy. It's clean with a K and Christy with a K. Um, and that's my Instagram handle is Clean Eating with Christy. And I've got lots of information. I have my stories there. Anybody can message me there. That's, that's a good place to find me. 
Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming and sharing your story and how you have reclaimed your life in the sense that you took care of your health. And by that, you also showing your daughters, you know, better example of how to have good relationship with food. Yes. No, thank you so much for having me and um, allowing me to share my story. That's um, it's so important that women hear that they can reclaim their life. Yeah. Thank you.